All right, so you want to just get started then, Doug, or? Sure, go for it. All right. Let me just say a couple things. Uh, first of all, I was talking with Doug, and maybe, and this is what we can discuss, maybe we want, you know, this meeting I would think might be short, and maybe what we might want to do is have another meeting on two, next Tuesday because I believe, and Joy, if you know better, correct me, but I believe on Monday uh, that the, when the build, when the town council meets, they're going to appoint different, uh, they are appointing people to some of the different committees. So, uh, so that's number one. Now let me explain what that means to us. Uh, number one, uh, I guess, I don't know where they're getting the, the rules or whatever, but we've had different number of peoples at different times. But I guess the last we had was six. And then, uh, uh, what's his name? Why can't I think of his name right now? Bob Gallagher. He left, so that brought us down to five. And now, I don't know if everybody knows or not, Sue Keenan uh, went on, and she's not on the committee any longer. So now we have four. Now, it all depends their interpretation of how many we should or shouldn't have, because I don't know if there's anything in any bylaws any place about this this group because there, it's not, I'm sorry, Joy. There is not. Right. And, and we're not really, it's really not a formal group. It's just uh, people that are working real hard, all of us to keep the building uh, running and to improve the building and to have ac positive activities at the building. But anyway, so having said that, I guess it's up to Bob LeMay on how many people he wants to appoint to our group, because I meant I had this conversation with Bob. So that's number one. So either they're going to appoint nobody, which I don't think that'll be it. They'll appoint one person or they'll appoint two. Okay. Having said that, talking with Doug and uh, there's a fella. Well, you, you want to tell him about Jim, Doug? Well, um, we knew that there was a potential of additional committee members. So um, I have uh, a guy that I'm friends with. He's a neighbor and he's retired and from the mills and uh, I thought he might be a good committee member if he was interested. Um, uh, you may know him, uh, particularly Joy, uh, is, it's Jim Palowski. And um, so I talked with him and we walked through the building and uh, he said that he would be interested and I be and that's the last communication I had with him, but I believe he was going to fill out an application on the town website. And uh, so, um, I think he would be uh, somebody that could help uh, Joe and Larry and I follow up on some of the items that we follow up on. Sounds great to me. Okay, so so that's uh, what we're going to wait for. Also, I don't know, maybe Lori doesn't know, but Mr. DeFuniak? I know. Yeah. Do you know about Bill? Yeah. Okay. And uh, we'll have to see how that all plays out also. How much. Oh, uh, and sorry, Joy, while I have you, Bill sent me the email with the invoices for the past two months, but does our contract with Long Beach expire the end of this year? It seems like I just signed it. <laughs> yeah, seems like it to me too. I'll, let me check into it. Okay, thanks. Bill doesn't leave till the 18th. Okay. I don't. I don't think that's true, Joy. Oh. Because, because uh, the new fella was sworn in on on Saturday. 
Bill or Joe, no, that's correct, Joy. And the new guy's appointment doesn't start until the 18th, as it sits right now. Oh, is, is that is that the way it works? He was sworn yes. in, but he's not actually appointed. It's effective the 18th? the 18th of February when Bill resigns or leaves. Okay, I didn't know that. I thought okay. once the person was sworn in. No, I just talked to the party chair a few hours ago. Okay, good. Well, good. Thank, thanks, Joy, and and, and Anita. Uh, so, so, check with Bill uh, and verify that that's current or not. Okay. So uh, that's that. Uh, I we have been. I think at last meeting we talked about room seven, which was uh, Price's room. That that now is uh, been leased out to uh, the Hogan family, and uh, this is where uh, she wants to do. And I always screw it up. Pilates something. Do you guys know what the word reminder or re something where there's machines involved? With, with it's reformer Pilates. Pilates. Okay, Pilates with, reformer. With Hogan. And uh, that's what they're going to do with the uh, with room seven, and that started on uh, February first. Uh, and uh, we're still looking to see what's going to happen with the other uh, rooms. Uh, there might be another room available. I'm not sure exactly what Laura Lee wants to do with because she right now has two rooms and she's thinking about it and we've got a couple people that would be interested in those rooms. So, uh, all right, that's all. And then the other thing is we started and if there's much conversation, if you want to have uh, with the why, uh, like we said, we do have a uh, a, a drip. I mean, it, I, I can't even call it a leak, but it's a drip in in one of the bathrooms at, uh, of the building. And we had a bucket underneath, and then with this drip, the bucket fills up. So we decided that we would try to turn off the water so that drip and then we wouldn't have to worry about the bucket but as it turns out uh, the shut off for that part it, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not explaining it's in uh, those two bathrooms that are next to room 7 they're not the main bathrooms but the two little bathrooms that are by themselves so in order to shut off that water we have to uh, go in the basement and look for the shutoff and the situation that it uh, develops is that by shutting off the water to those two bathrooms, it all runs on the same line that runs with the Y and, uh, the, and also that, what was that, the old kindergarten room? I think it was called, and there's a little uh, kitchenette with two bathrooms there, and then there's the Y, and it's and also room seven. All of the water for those uh, shut off because because of this. So, and then uh, that bucket to fill. Right. That's that's the problem is that you got to if if you don't turn it off, you got to keep filling the bucket, and that might be, you know, every three, four hours. Oh. So so that's why we chose now to shut it off. Now, uh, Joe? Yes, Doug? You might uh, add that we learned about this this morning when the Y got to the building when they opened up, so we don't know when it started, but... Yeah, that's, that's correct, and I put in I put in my overtime for the for the week. Uh, I got a nice, which is good. I'm not complaining. A nice, friendly text 
at about 6.15 in the morning. So I was, I just, anyway, so that's when I went over and to look at the whole situation. And there was uh, water on the floor of the one bathroom and there was water on the carpeting next to room seven. So we're, we're not 100% sure how it happened and when the drip started. So we'll try to investigate and find out. So that leads to why now, I guess, did, did you get to, did you, Laura, did you get a chance to talk to Angela at all yet about this? Um, not Angela directly, um, through uh, Marla here, you know, at our report branch, so. Because uh, we, we had a short conversation with Angela just to update her, Doug and I, and we explained that one possibility, there might be a couple options, but one, one possibility is, which is the state right now, that the water to the Y is shut off. There, there is no water where you, she can't do her, uh, her laundry or whatever they do and, Towels, yeah. and mopping, et cetera. And I didn't realize that, that which again is good, that you have a water station there or something that uses the regular water. I thought it was by, you know, other water. But so there are a couple of things that the Y does not have right now. And I think the only thing I would be concerned about would be the bathrooms. In which in which regards, whether it's usable? Yeah, they're available. Well, the the main thing that I was concerned about, and that's where when I turned the water off, when I found the right valve to turn off, we double checked that the two main washrooms are not affected. Oh, okay. So the two main washrooms are not affected, uh, and I don't think. And again, I don't know what what you guys do, but I I don't think that they use those two washrooms, you know, off the kitchen there, that little area, you know, if you call it, what, what does everybody call that, Joy, the kindergarten room? Yes. Yeah, off of that kindergarten room, that's where people use for, for exercise and stuff, that uh, there's two bathrooms in there, but I don't think they use it, use them very often. And then there's this kitchen sink in there, which I don't know how often it's used. So, uh, that's just the update on that, and I don't know, you know, no. what, you guys, what you guys think. I'm sorry, Doug? Um, maybe you mentioned that I was daydreaming, but uh, you might also mention or make sure you mention that you called the plumber first thing this morning and left a message, and we don't know when, how, how quickly they'll be able to respond. Yeah, that, that that's our dilemma. So... I guess, Laura, uh, it's, a, it's up to you. Can the Y function without water? Yeah, I, I would think so. I mean, um, like I said, we can keep wiping the equipment down near the floors. You know, hopefully within the next 24 to 48 hours, someone can get out there and look at it and take care of it, hopefully. Um, as long as the bathrooms are available, I don't really see a problem with it. Okay. Uh, Joy, do you have anything to say about it? No. Okay. So, Doug, we'll just, we'll, we'll leave it as is because, you know, okay. Doug, do, do we have any more to say about the about the why, the water? Well, we, we did offer to uh, Angela to go over in the morning and turn the uh, water on in the building um, and then turn it off so it wouldn't run all night um, so that they would have access. And that may be, you know, something we'd have to do for one day or two days, but uh, right now we don't know. And that would give them access to water in the Y spaces during that time. Does mean that someone would have to check that uh, bucket in the small toilet room and make sure it doesn't overflow again. Right. Let's play it by ear. Let's see if we get a response from a plumber at all in the next, you know, 24 hours and hopefully okay. and then we'll go from there okay i think for now leaving it off is fine 
um, they have access, you know, to water, you know, for other things. So I think that's fine. Okay, because there there is, and you know, it, it's a little awkward, but there is a, a larger sink in the large men's washroom, which you know, it is a distance if you have to drag a bucket over or something, but. There is that a, a big a big sink in there for cold water, and and then the only thing the only thing we would ask a little bit uh, hopefully it wouldn't be a problem, but if whoever's there would check maybe you know every three four hours or something just to make sure that bucket isn't overflowing. Yeah, we should be able to do that. If that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, then Doug, I, I don't know what how you guys feel. If you want to try to uh, talk about other topics, or do you want to wait until maybe we could have a meeting on next Tuesday once we know who's on our committee? So I don't know. I'm I'm up for either one. I just wondered. The only reason I said we'd we'd wait. I'm sorry that we'd wait, at least maybe that new person could feel like they're part of us, but it's whatever you guys think. And I, I'd like to, I and I, sorry, I picked Tuesday because it's the day after Monday. That's all. I, Tuesday's not a significant day to me next Tuesday, but just because it's after Monday, if we wanted to do it on a different day, that's fine with me also. I'd like to talk about room 13 and uh, Doug's proposal because the park board meets tomorrow and I don't want to wait a whole other month to talk to them about it. Okay. Um, you saw the budget outline that I got, um, I sent to you. Uh, um, I had met with, uh, to bring everybody else up to speed, I had met with uh, Dale Brown of Michiana Construction and went over the things that were being considered in that space, which included removing that non-functioning doors around the uh, coat closet area, uh, kind of cleaning that up a little bit uh, with some small uh, woodwork repairs, and then painting that space and all of the walls uh, in the um, room itself. And we also talked about uh, removing those unit ventilators that are in that space. There are two of them, and uh, and patching the wall uh, there because there are holes uh, that would be left when those are removed, and uh, then removing the um, raceway, the electrical raceway from the old computers that uh, run along the base of that. And so he had given us a budget number uh, for that uh, to, for us to use for planning purposes uh, of, of just over $7,000. I'm doing it by memory, seventy-one fifty, I think. Um, and um, now we could uh, reduce that or talk with him and ask for more detail if uh, we were to choose, but um, it would be in the in the interests of the better in the interests of everybody to get those unit ventilators out of there sooner rather than later and now would be a good time if we got somebody to do it so i just mentioned that uh, we also uh, mentioned the possibility of reflooring and uh, he um, gave us a, uh, a range of budget depending upon the flooring that was used we were talking about sheet vinyl flooring of one type or another not removing the existing tile that's in there, but putting a new uh, vinyl floor above it, either sheet vinyl or uh, a slat type of um, vinyl floor. And he gave us a range of prices for that from about $3,300 to just under 8,000, I think. And in order to proceed with that, we could get together with him and look at some samples and talk about the advantages and disadvantages but that would be that those numbers are helpful for planning purposes. So um, I don't um, at this point, uh, you know, I don't know what you think about that, Joy, or if you got any comments. Uh, do you think that's? Uh, it seems like a fairly big project when you include the 
the unit ventilators and the patching and all that kind of stuff. It seems like a reasonable price to me. I, uh, how do you feel, Doug? Well, I think it's, I think it's reasonable. It's important to know that there's at this point, um, until you start into that work, it's hard to uh, pin down a maximum cost. And so uh, I believe that this is represents um, a safe number. You know, we don't know how big the holes are underneath there. Um, they don't, they're not familiar with the piping that they're connected to. And so there are some variations, but I think, um, and I know the amount of work that it took when Horst and I, and with Joe's help, removed those four that were in the unit, in the, uh, in the dining space, the cafeteria, uh, gymnasium space, and patching those holes. So I think it's a reasonable number. Um, and, you know, the advantage of using somebody like this is that they're, it's a professional firm. They do work for um, entities around the county, um, and they're licensed in the town, and, you know, so... Um, I'm comfortable with it as a number as well. I was kind of looking at this as a opportunity to try them and see how they were to work with and uh, how good their workmanship actually is for us. And, um, and if we were to proceed with this, whether we do the floor or whether we remove the wall, if we were, let me say it this way, if we were to do everything that's being talked about here, repainting, uh, patching the holes in the ceiling, patching the holes in the wall, removing those unit ventilators, and putting a new floor in, uh, that room would look uh, pretty pretty nice. So uh, it would dress it right up. Um, so, you know, it, uh, I think it's, it would be money well spent, I guess, is where I'm going with that. Yeah, I agree with you. Did Joe, did you get a chance to look at the paint colors? I, I know Doug and I looked at them, and we, of course, went for the lightest one that was there. And and I Doug Doug explained that and I agreed with you guys. I think the lighter looks better. I don't think a dark gray, you know, is is what we need. But the lighter color I thought looked a lot better. Okay, I think we all agree on that. I would like to take to the park board tomorrow night at least the not the flooring. I think we can uh, still talk about that. But I would I would like to take the first part of the proposal to the park board and see if they would fund that. I mean, I know the park board uses that room a lot. And, uh, and so I think they might be willing to uh, fund that. I can ask uh, Dale if he can put it on a letterhead and make it a little uh, more, uh, you know, business-like. Yeah. That yeah, would that, be helpful. Yeah, that would be very helpful. So. Okay. Now, Joy, not yeah. not that I'm trying to push it, but would it would you be more comfortable if you had two approaches and and maybe if we maybe we're trying to do too much by taking out which I agree with Doug 100 percent, but but I'm just saying for you would it, do you think if that number's too high, we could try to find out what it would cost without taking out those old heaters. I don't think the number is too high, and okay. actually, so uh, I think we should start here. Okay, good. Then I'll be quiet. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's okay. that, that, that's good. I was just looking to make it easier for you if you felt it was too high. Okay. Well, that's great. I'll do that. Okay. That's all I have, really. Okay. So. Uh, do you think, and, and maybe I'm, I'm looking for too much, do you think we should have, once we find out who, who's new in our group, that we should have a meeting uh, sometime short, uh, you know, in next week or something? Or do you want to just wait, you know, for the regular meeting? We could do that too. I'm not, I'm not pushing either one. I'm asking you guys. I think waiting for the regular meeting is fine, in my opinion. The only, uh, the only other thing uh, I need to mention is that um, we did have that updated quote from Meyer Glass for those doors uh, in the corridor uh, leading towards the Y that go out to the courtyard. And that quote is only good for 30 days or till about the end of February. So if we wait 
to our next regular meeting in March, then we would have to get another price. So, is the hold up here? We're waiting to see what we made off the art in the park to add to the civic funds. Well, what we're what we're what we're what am I trying to say? What what if you want to call it a hold up or just evaluation is. Uh, Doug shared with me the other day uh, an email that he had received from from Sue, from uh, what's that fellow's name, Doug? From the Paul Paul Applegate. Yeah, from Mr. Applegate, and I think just just for rough numbers, I don't have it exactly in front of me, but I thought that the conclusion said that maybe uh, Civic had a roughly twenty four hundred dollars left to contribute. And that's where I was going to, uh, unless, uh, just check with Mr. Applegate. Are you, do you know Mr. Applegate very well, Joy? No. Okay. All right. So I, I can give Mr. Applegate a call and just make sure, number one, that uh, we still have that $2,400 from Civic. And then, uh, and may, maybe it's good that, because I, I thought he was done. But maybe it's better for us if Bill is still on the job, then maybe he can give us the report of how much uh, we actually made. And uh, because, Joy, did we talk? I don't know if we talked about this, but I was just curious. How? What was the the and I I thought the uh, art fair was excellent, and I hope Sue stays with uh, you know with the park board. And, and, and pushes the, the art fair again next year. And I was just curious what the, uh, the plan was. What, what, where, was the, where was the revenue to come in? Uh, was it from each artist? Or I, I, I never understood the whole concept. Each artist paid, I think, just a $50 fee to be able to set up there. And then some of the artists gave a percentage of their sales to the community center, and then we got donations from people just walking around. Okay, so, so those are the items that we should get from Bill to see what those numbers are. Yeah, when I talk to Bill about the Y lease, uh, probably tomorrow, I'll find out what those numbers are and let you know. Okay, see what he can do because I, I got to chat with Bill also, and then. Uh, because my, my feel, and, and I don't know, now this is a park board decision, that uh, what, whatever happened with the pizza. You know, <laughs> that, and, was a, that was and, a learning experience for sure. <laughs> yeah, with, with, without a doubt. And, and again, it's all, it's all in the same house, but it's just kind of moving the money around, you know, and, and I, I'm not espousing one side or the other. But like I say, I think that was like a fourteen hundred dollar number, or so, roughly. And uh, is that something that the park board was willing to uh, absorb, or is yes. that something that they were going to take it off of the uh, off of the proceeds? No, no, the park board absorbed that, and we just chalked it up as a learning experience. And next year, when we the park board is going to take on the project of the art fair, and next year, I think we're going to stick to like uh, drinks and ice cream, uh, something like that. Something because uh, there's when I figured it out that the amount of time that that pizza truck was there, there was no way that they could sell enough pizzas. They couldn't make them fast enough <laughs> pizza for us to not be in the hole. Okay. Well, good. Because because then I know if, if you're going to talk to Bill, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk to Bill also. And I'm, part of it, my conversation is going to be about the, uh, you know, about the profit from, from, from the uh, okay. art fair. Okay. Just to see what he has to say. And okay. I guess I guess I'll call Mr. Applegate and make sure that uh, Civic still has the twenty four because if if that's if all of this is true, then you know say you have the twenty four from Civic, 
and I don't know, just pretend to make a round number, say you got uh, a thousand, you know, from, from profit. Yeah. So, so then, you know, that's 3,400 bucks. So we're only looking uh, out of the town to give us 16. Yeah. It'd be better. And uh, our next budget meeting is uh, Wednesday. So I'll try to get some of these numbers together so I can at least mention it at, at, at the budget meeting. So. Okay. Does anybody else have anything else? Then you, I'm sorry, uh, let me just read back. Joy gave her opinion. So then it's fine. It's fine with me also, Joy, if that's, and Doug and Laura, do we want to just wait and uh, to the next meeting in, in, in March and and not not have a, an extra meeting just to find out who the people are? If we have another meeting, we would have, it would have to be advertised, wouldn't it? Or posted yeah. on I, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm still that all that all still questions because that you know that's all the form anyway. I'll shut up. So, what do you think, Doug? I can wait. Okay, Laura, that's okay with you. Yep, that's good. I could go either way. Okay. Okay, good. All right. So, anybody else have anything? Super. All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.